Well, they're in the 20s right now and so close to being on the countdown every week. So, uh, well, there's no better time to get to know the band Atrium. Now, Brian is with me from Atrium. How are you today, man? Awesome. Thank you so much for, for having me. Um, well, I'm looking forward to Thank talk. you for being on Real Rock Nights, man. Uh, these every We're going to be hearing you every week. And uh, uh, just I get a feeling it's just going to be like a matter of days. And your guys are going to be in the teens. Now, uh, Atrium is out of Florida, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we're all Florida. You're yep. all, the whole the whole band is from Florida? Where have yes. you did it? Uh, when did you guys uh, begin? A- as we know, Atrium, how uh, how long have you guys been together? Well, we did uh, some recording in Nashville with our producer, Johnny K in uh december of last year or no it was uh january of this year so it's it's fresh this year we did the recordings uh for the two singles that we have out right now above water and warrior in the garden okay and we worked with johnny k and in, in january of this year so it's very very fresh just all 2023 so it, did everyone click right from the beginning where you're like yeah and we we had this. <laughs> well, um, it kind of evolved a little bit. The 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 members. Um, okay. The studio members are different um, from the live members. Okay. So so right now, um, it was started with me, uh, and I had a different project going on, but I want to focus on this one. And I had some song ideas that were, in my opinion, good. And I always wanted to work with Johnny K. And I ended up going to Chicago. So I wanted to do a single with him and see his studio in Chicago. Once I made contact with him, I found out that he moved to Nashville. So after my visit in Chicago... Uh, with some family then i went to nashville and i met there with uh drummer chad zaliga who played for breaking benjamin black label society um and uh he's a good friend of mine back from from pennsylvania where i grew up he met us there and uh, it was me him and johnny who did these three or these two uh singles warrior in the garden and above water so okay. from there, I didn't really have a plan <laughs> other than creating, you know, good music and seeing where things go. And um, so after the songs were completed, I had some ideas for music videos. So I produced the two music videos that we have right now, which means I wrote the scripts I did the location scouts. I picked the actors. Oh, I was wow. Behind, I was behind the director while he did all the filming. Um, and pleased to work with Thomas Crane from Kill Devil Films. He works with Saliva and Queensryche. Yeah. And a, lot of other, wow. a lot of other amazing bands that are on tour nationally and, and do real good stuff. His visuals are amazing. He has such a creative, uh, creative mind, but I was really organized with the production of all of the above that I just mentioned. So we shot these two music videos in one weekend. We did Saturday. We did the locations with the actors. We ran from location to location to location, did it all in one day. And then we did the performance pieces uh, the next day. So which means we played along to the music. We did the close-ups, we did the faraways, you know, all those kind of shots that we did. Um, we did it, we did two music videos in, in one weekend. So it was really organized by time. We had to meet with the, you know, actors, we had the scripts, we had the locations, everything was all set and ready to go. Costumes, props, like everything you could think of that go into a music video. We had it organized and and ready to go. So God. and well, you you have to have it all set up and cl- if you're doing two, like yeah, in, we, in that yeah. time span, short of time span, yeah. Was, yeah. man. So yeah. 
anyway yeah. so you you did all this like in that short bit uh, bit of time and uh, uh what were you going to say that like you had everything listed out that you had to do yes yeah we had shot list we had um location timing actors names um costumes props we use these like smoke bombs that we lit at, at this farm where we did warrior in the garden sure. so it looked like it represented you know some of the things that we could talk about later what the music what the songs are about but um we had it all organized so that leads me to say that we needed members for the music videos to be part of the band so two of the members that were in the music videos are now part of the band and one oh, of really? the and one of the members that was in the music video did the writing of the guitars for the unreleased songs so we have like four more unreleased songs that are in the in the in the uh, waiting chamber you have all all your bases covered. You even have stuff like waiting in the wings to be like put out. That that's awesome, yeah. man. We're yeah. gonna have so much more to look forward to from Atrium. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's let's get some background on uh, you as a musician. Uh, at what age did you think of making music? At the age of thirteen, my uncle made a guitar for me from different made, pieces made a guitar okay yeah. all frankenstein a guitar yeah. together okay exactly yeah he was he plays all the eddie van Hal the van halen stuff steve vi joe satriani incredible just amazing guitar wow. player. played all his life and he's an electrician now uh, he was an electrician um and he passed away a few months ago so oh. you know rest in peace uh uncle exactly. bill yeah but he uh he turned me on the music, uh, onto rock music. He showed me how to play Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana with the power chord. And um, I I just figured everything else out from there. I never learned how to read music or chart music. Um so it's all theory, basically. It's all it's all it's all based on, you know, how it made me feel and where I just uh, figured things out on my own. Once you learn a power chord, then you kind of go, can go all around the guitar. You get those power yeah. chords and that just yeah. lets it loose, man. Yeah. And then you just train by your ear. So you listen to different songs and can play them, you know, just by listening. So I had that, I had that skill um, and developed that skill once That's I started putting my fingers on all the strings and saying, okay, that note sounds like this let's hear this song and okay, I need to move my finger down a few frets in order to hit that note, that type of thing. So it was all just based on ear, um, self-taught, um, ear, you know, just from, from Damn, listening. I've always been jealous of people like you. You suck, man. It's like <laughs> being, able to, being able to have perfect pitch. I hate that, man, because I do not. My ears suck, man. Uh, what uh, kind of a teen would you say you were? Like, uh, when you, like, I always already see that you were driven. Like, it, talking about uh, just you hit those power chords and, and then you just wanted to sit and learn songs and stuff. But uh, past that, what did what were your interests past, like, guitar? Or did you not have any? I loved music. I, I grew up listening to all of the um, all of the grunge, the, the Seattle grunge type of music, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Nirvana, Alice in Chains. So Alice in Chains was my favorite out of okay. all because it had the dark type of uh feel and the vocals just soared and i was able to just learn the whole album <laughs> learn the whole albums um just by sitting down so that was I, I loved music and my family uh my my grandfather both grandfathers and my father were uh carpenters or my dad's still a carpenter okay so I, I loved i loved carpentry so i ended up i ended up doing some carpentry in in high school and then also in in college i did some carpentry as well so that was kind of what and then i got into hotels 
So that was kind of what I, I got into uh, as, a, like as a actually team. managing them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Hospitality. Like, yep. uh, do you have a degree in that? Did you go to school for that? No, no. I just worked my way, worked my way through different positions in the, in the hospitality industry. So I I love I love hospitality and I love music. So that kind of goes, you know, developing relationships like talking with you and it's true yeah. uh, meeting meeting eric who got me in in you know introduced to you so the whole hospitality of everything is 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 what i love i love to meet people talk about things and that's what we're doing now so i'm in i'm in my glory right now with talking to you with the <laughs> well with the whole aspect man because uh, you're you're uh doing this is not just me man you're doing this like every day with all kinds of different people you're running this whole campaign uh what was it like where you grew up it was a small town um very but very close to new york city so it was in the poconos of pennsylvania oh, so you could get the best of both worlds yes exactly yeah okay. yeah and a friend of mine that we we went to college together i spent a lot of time in new york city so it was great just to be in new york city and we'd go down the street like back in back in those days where they'd have a mixtape and a bootleg and you know you could get a cd you know that of songs that were like unreleased yep. and stuff like that 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 was the, those were the days that i loved going down canal street and going into the city i loved the new york city it was it was fun a, a lot of times uh, going in, into the city. It was uh, that actually out of all the places I've lived in my life out there on the East coast. I, I freaking loved it, man. It's like, uh, uh, like you are saying, man, going to all those uh, bootleg sellers. And that's uh, because uh, when I was out there, it was back like when DVDs were big. So yeah. it's like, of course, like there's like, I don't even know what do they do now? When was the last time you were out there? What? I don't know. It's been a long time. I've been in Florida since 2015. And I haven't okay. Because I'm city. actually wondering like what they're. If, oh, okay. I'm going off on attention. I do this all the time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what uh, would you say was uh, your ultimate goal with uh, the band? What wh where do you want to reach? I mean, past past. I know. I know the ultimate goal. Uh, in everybody else's minds is to be that uh, uh, huge band that uh, 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 Metallica, so to speak, you know, whoever, you know, total rock stars. National. But what do you want the most out of Atrium? This is a really, this is going to be a shocking answer and okay. different because that's how I am. Uh, what I want <laughs> is yeah, not, I like different, man. Yeah. What I want is not the typical cookie cutter request into the air that I want to be as big as Metallica. What I want from Atrium is for people to understand what's going on in the world and why it's going on and to open their minds to question a lot of things. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want the message. I want the feeling. And I want it to be universal as well. So I want it to relate to anyone who's listening to Above Water, for example. The chorus is keeping my head above water, just keeping my head above water. I look to the sky wondering why keeping my head above water. That could mean that you're struggling in your job. That could mean that you're struggling to pay your rent. That could mean that you're struggling in a relationship. Keeping your head above water is just trying to survive. Okay. But my but my version of it, if you watch, if you watch the music video, is about hurricanes. So the water in the hurricane and the water rising in the hurricane makes you keep your head above water it forces you to do that so what i want out of atrium is i want people to listen to the music feel good and relate to whatever that's going on in their life and apply that music to that and relate okay. to it 
But then in addition to that, I want people to understand what's going on in the world and to see the big picture of what is going on. Okay. All right. That I, I can see that. And uh, even, even with warrior in the garden too, I can, I can see that uh, uh, you're trying to like hit multiple aspects of people's lives, things that they could be going through. Not, not necessarily. There's like multiple different takes from that. Almost every time I hear the song or see the video and uh, the visuals in that video are awesome, man. And the people, uh, uh, watching on YouTube. And if you're not, if you're just listening and you haven't watched on YouTube, this is going to be uploaded full unedited to our YouTube channel. But, uh, after the video, after we get done talking here, you will have a chance to click on the videos that we are talking about and actually like see them. And the visuals in these videos are freaking amazing, man. Uh, okay. You touched on uh, above water. You were talking about and yeah. uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, you actually uh, uh, got in a movie score. That's going to be yeah. Yeah. coming out here in uh, just a couple of days, man. Yeah. Yeah. In a couple of days, it's it's uh, it's a movie called the Bermuda Bermuda Triangle Project. It's a it is a uh, it's a thriller. And um, there was some. Uh, director that was local here that I connected with through some through some friends that were also in some music videos in the past and also in the music videos that are current. So they were actors in those. It, it the industry is amazing. The music industry is amazing. The everybody's hospitality industry is amazing. Like everybody, that's so it's such a small world when it comes to in any industry really you know everybody kind of knows each other but that's how you get to develop relationships you meet people and then things happen so i met with this uh i met with this director and i actually donated to his film and then i showed him the music video before it was released i was like check this out what do you think and he's like can we use this immediately he was like can we use oh, this really want to we want this to be in we want this to be like the part of the movie so that is awesome and and i want to preface that this is no small movie i mean uh sean whalen alex baca are in this movie so yeah. you have some this is heavy hitters man and uh this is, <laughs> i'm sorry to interrupt but you were okay, you, okay uh so he, he wanted that right away in the movie yes yep yeah. That is just, I mean, like I said, man, it, it's so powerful and the visuals in that video just grab you. So I'm sure, do you think that is what he saw in there? I think he saw that, but the music is 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 going to go at the end. It's going to play the full song at the end credits. And in the movie, there's a scene where it's kind of playing in the background. But in the end credits is, is where it's really cool because it, it just, after the movie it just drives the ending like, like it should. And just, I, I, like I almost think it's like a perfect uh, uh, storm, so to speak uh, with uh, your sound and then also your influences. And this is a found footage type movie through, you know, thriller movie, like think Blair witch, but on a ship for the most right. part. And yeah. uh, uh I think that music goes hand in hand with like that time period of thinking about Blair Witch. And mm -hmm. so I think this is almost going to be a throwback for some people, but also it's going to be something for young people to discover again. Be like, this is awesome. Yeah. 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 We're looking forward to it. Uh, now you were talking about all your influences and, uh, uh, I hear so much in your music, and uh, you said that Allison Chains was uh, the one that really grabbed you, and uh, you've loved Allison Chains and pretty much all elements through that. And that do you feel that that comes as much as I do.
think I lost you for a moment there. I think you're back now. Oh, okay. <laughs> there, <laughs> yeah. I, I never you you've been there the whole time, but I I like finished the question. And you just sat there and I was like, oh, okay. And then I realized yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, there was a delay in the internet or something happened here. So uh sorry. So about did that. you get the question or yeah, I got the question. What what other okay. instances do do I have? Um and you know that it started with that grunge music when I was 13 with the Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, the whole the gr- whole grunge era, but it evolved into hard rock music. And Seven Dust is a big influence ah, for okay. me. And um that stemmed out for me to follow Clint Lowry when he left Seven Dust. And he started a band called Dark New Day with Brett Hesla, Troy McLaughorn, Will Hunt, and those guys were from Evanescence and Corey Lowry, Clint's brother. So I followed them and I ended up working with Brett Hesla on two other records on a prior project. And we don't have to talk about all that right now, but it was amazing to work with him. And that's how I kind of stepped into this other project that we're working on right now, Atrium, which is amazing. But I really loved Seven Dust and Dark New Day and followed Dark New Day. And then when Dark New Day broke up, I still followed Seven Dust. So I followed yeah. Seven Dust. I followed Dark New Day. Dark New Day broke up. Clint came back to Seven Dust. And that's when they did the album with Johnny K in Chicago. And ever since then, I knew who Johnny K was. So you wanted to work with him that many years ago. And I always wanted to work with him. And I ended up working with Brett Hessler first, but then now I'm working with Johnny K. So the whole thing was, you know, backpedaling back to me wanting to go to, go to Chicago and do a single with Johnny K and he moved to Nashville and I ended up doing it there with him. That's how that all happened. So those influences from, um, from seven dust and nonpoint. And he worked with, with, uh, with disturbed stained. I think he's, he, he was responsible for, for the uh, disturbed. Oh, wow. Okay, so, back in <laughs> back in two thousand, <laughs> when they came that, out, that. that was actually his idea. That was oh, that's I don't cool. Know. And that was I don't I don't know if it was his idea, but I know that he was the you know he was the producer on on that on that record. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, and he's okay. actually re-recording Stain's um, first record because now they own the rights to their music, so he's working with them on. You know, he didn't do the, their new album, but he's working with them on uh, re-recording the the first record. So kind of I I and I, when I heard that, I was like, hey, this this could be kind of cool. Are they going to go back in and do it? Do you know, are they going to go back in and do it the way they wanted to? I think they're playing it very close to what the original sound was, but they're playing it better from what I heard. They're playing it. OK. Because <laughs> there are just just a, like you know uh, when you get too many like hands in in the kitchen or too many people working on the soup you know uh, stuff gets you like hear it later or see it later or whatever it is and like hey that's not really what I was going for but okay so I was yeah. wondering so I wonder if we're gonna get some more of those elements put in there uh, now yeah. let's get to the song that everybody is going to start hearing in uh, like a few days and i'm going to spin it here in a little while warrior in the garden okay you guys are in the the 20s right now and uh uh like i said i there's been a few heavy hitters that have lost spins like over the last week and uh, I don't know, I haven't looked, uh, the new SMR numbers came out like about half an hour ago, but I haven't had a chance to look. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's going to propel Warrior in the Garden up higher. And uh, so it's just going to be a matter of days, man. And uh, I'm playing you guys every week. Uh, wow. Warrior in the Garden, now uh, uh, it's got like that rhythmic pattern and it kind of pulls you in and... Uh, sets up the whole tune but then it takes you to 
uh, I guess what I can only describe as an earworm in the chorus, because dude, the first three days that I played that song, I had only heard it like twice before I, I added it to the flagship station. I woke up three days hearing that song in my head. The chorus of the song was wow. <laughs> now, is, is that kind of the way you, you like to write songs? Yeah. Is they're like going to stick. I like to focus on the hook. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that, that it, in songwriting, that's, that's, that's the most important thing. So nailing that down first and then the riff, you know, cause you yeah. need the guitar riff, which is the intro, Yep. you know, to the song and it, it grabs you cause it's just, it's just guitar and then the drums come in, but the hook is, is the most important part to get you to play that in, in your head over and over again. And then you want to hear it again. So that's, that's, that's important. And we're at number 23 right now. Number we're, 23. I, yeah, I had, okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So next week, man, uh, well, from now on, because uh, you'll be on after this interview. And uh, yeah. from now yeah. on, we're playing Warrior in the Garden. That's awesome, awesome man. Uh, what has response been like from uh, fans? What are you hearing about uh, Warrior in the Garden? That they that they love it. And um, it, it, it really what it represents is is backpedaling again to the beginning of our of our interview yeah when you asked me what 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 do you want out of atrium do you want to be metallica and the answer was no and people are relating to especially when they see the music video that there's things that really happen like train derailments and fires and chemical spills that that really happened a lot of things happened this year and it just represents that and to not forget that those things took place and that we need to be aware of those things. So, and that's what you want people to take away from this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, to look inside is like, we're all in this, <laughs> we're all warriors, so to speak. Yes. And yeah. uh, we're, we're in this big ass garden that's kind of messed up. Exactly. Exactly. And then when these things happen I and mean, people get pushed out of their, out of their homes, they get pushed out of their farms, you know, a fire could deem a land unlivable. And then someone else comes in and takes over and then you're out. So it's, it's an important message to be delivering in, in, in my opinion. And it's a calling for everyone well but you have to uh yeah just uh look forward and and think about uh, the possibility of different things like happening and uh, squashing it right away you know being that warrior this that that is pretty much uh the message i take from this song and uh uh like i said the just just like uh uh within uh your other song uh, I hear so many of those influences in this song. It is really, uh, and what do you think is uh, uh, one of the influences that comes through the most as far as like in, in the songwriting? When you're writing a song, are you, you channeling a certain person that you used to listen to? In this particular song, Warrior in the Garden, in the verses, I was feeling like a Miles Kennedy alter bridge okay. where I into the head voice. And that's what I was kind of feeling because I'm, I'm a big fan of alter bridge, Mark Tarani, seven dust. They all, you know, those guys all are, you know, spend a lot of time in Orlando and, and that's not far from here. And I love Orlando and, and, the, and those guys too know all those guys. So it's uh, that's what was my, my thought with that but everything else came natural the guitar parts for these two particular songs were written first before any kind of lyrics or melodies and that's how i always write i do what the guitar makes me feel okay and without a drum machine or a drummer playing live in a room i'm playing to a click track 
All right. And that's it's me, the guitar, guitar and the guitar and a click track. <laughs> okay. I time, I time it out and then I structure out a whole song how and and do the guitar, play the guitar and whatever it makes me feel like, that's where it leads me. And then everything else comes comes after that. And then of course when the drummer comes in that changes the whole Oh, okay. That was see. Songs. You keep yeah. on going where uh, Bumblefoot was on here uh, uh, last week, and he okay. did the same thing. He kept on like uh, going exactly where I was going to go in the conversation. <laughs> he kept <laughs> answering questions. I'm like, okay, I don't have to talk about that. Don't have to talk about that. But all right, so you do when the drumming comes in, things do change. You do have to change intensity. That's what I was going to ask, like, because you are guitar and click track for the most part. And right. then right. when the yeah. drums come in, is it ever like uh, you're like the other instruments come in and you're like, oh, wait, it sounds a hell of a lot better if I did this. Yeah. Once in a while. Once That's in a the, while. Okay. All right. It'll, it'll change for the better. Okay. What are we looking at for tours and live shows? We're towards the end of 2023. Uh, and, uh, oh, you guys are going to be doing a show with uh, uh, Max Sabbath here coming up. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, on Saturday. Going to be doing one. Okay. And uh, uh, then we're at the end of 2023, uh, lining some stuff up for 2024. Are you? We're talking about some things right now, but we can't announce anything yet well yeah i'm not asking for an announcement or anything <laughs> just like a vague like yeah uh we're setting up like a run here run here, there you know kind of thing so you are looking forward to stuff yeah, yeah. and we did a run with our friends from cold so we okay. work we work with a promote uh a promoter group called filthy nasty productions okay they're they're, they're good friends to me and have been good friends and we my other project played some really great gigs um going all the way back to 2021 2022 and now this year has just been atrium so i have a relationship with them and they're they're great they're great guys so they got us lined up with cold so we did a three-day run with cold um in september and we know those those guys because a lot of them are from my hometown. So it was like a family reunion to get. That's to- that's so okay. wild, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Every when uh, the the whole festival thing basically like really got going when we're really in the middle of it. Uh, uh, it was weird. Uh, I started working with uh, a couple different record companies, and I would go to these festivals and work the media tents. And it was so weird after like uh, the first two or so, all this, all of the sudden uh, it was like uh, people would walk into the tent and you're like, Hey, shop and run over, give me a hug. And I said, it's almost like a family reunion after yes. a while, yep. like everybody's intertwined. And then like, I would go there and I would see all these other guys from other radio stations I used to work at. And uh, they'd be like, well, hey, let's go to dinner or whatever. Then go to dinner and there are other guys from from bands in there. It's like, how come I'm, I remember one of the one of the artists is like, uh, how come all the people that we like, like are with other people that we like? And it's yeah. like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, OK, we like this guy from this station. This guy's a dick, but we like this guy from this station. OK, how come you guys are friends? What the hell? But yeah, it is it is really cool. It's a small knit community, but yeah, it's actually large in a way too. Yeah, you get in a room with all these people and you're like, I didn't know you know him. Oh, yeah, my, you know, no way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly yeah. what happens. Yeah. Uh atrianband.com is the website and yes. uh uh socials. You guys are on pretty much everything, aren't you? Yes, yeah, we're on everything. Yeah, we're on Twitter instagram facebook and then our website and then tiktok tiktok also all right yeah. okay you are there are uh yeah. uh okay what do you do on tiktok do you like because i really don't maybe i should start getting some of my stuff on tiktok because all the other sites i'm on but i really haven't done anything on tiktok because i always think of that as like the teen dancing lip syncing channel 
we what post is it like what do you put do our videos there we put our videos there our music videos oh you can actually put uh, oh, uh i thought it was yeah. short form i thought it was like 30 or 60 seconds or something it was and it changed oh yeah yeah so their servers got bigger okay yeah. yep. all right yeah okay maybe i'll have to go check that out you know and to do it right i think you need to be around 30 seconds or or a minute at the most and then do little clips of the song so before above water came out we had a 30 second clip of just the beginning of that riff coming in and then it kind of cut okay. and then so that kind of you know had its thing and then we posted the uh video in full so you can watch the video in full on tiktok and then warrior in the garden as well you can watch the full video on tiktok it's just another platform another way to get exposure and whoever's whoever's in there okay so it sounds like uh they're almost going to like a youtube format yeah yeah totally. it's it's you can do a full length kind of video okay all right yeah. awesome well thanks yeah. for the info yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm like okay i'm supposed to be interviewing you and no i'm just like uh i don't know getting advice on no that's things. all right hey that's all good everybody oh, should man. know everybody should know how to how to uh promote so that's good that's good the, stuff uh also uh uh any any uh thoughts about possibly putting to get their patreon in the future that's a good idea that's a good idea it's like uh from what i've heard from other artists uh it's an awesome way to connect with fans well actually patreon really? and discord yeah, we're very we're very green right now. So I'm just I'm just and we're just trying to get grow organically. Okay. It's like do we want our social media numbers and followers to be high? Yes, but are we sprinting to get there? No. We That's... are you're doing it the smart we way. are doing the marathon that's a uh, marathon here we want people to engage with us that really are going to come back and we're not we're not here to sprint to the to the finish line we're here for the marathon so that's that's my that's where we're at right now and just to backpedal real quick about the shows yeah we did that three-day run with cold and that was amazing and we have this show with Max Sabbath on Saturday. And we're also going to be um, doing a show with the Iron Maidens. They do a, a okay. maiden tribute. It's all female yep. uh, band. And uh, Club LA and, and Destin uh, next month. So next. other than that, yeah, other than that, we don't have anything else planned other than get together with Thomas Crane from Kill Devil Films and do another <laughs> music video for the next song. <laughs> As you wring your hands together. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I just love oh, that. Okay. Well, it's been, I, uh, I had something, I have one other thing I wanted to ask you, but I can't remember what in the hell it was now. We were talking about something. Okay. Well, Talking about Regardless. social media, right? We were talking about so social medias. We were talking about website. We were talking about show. Oh, oh, uh, when you're at a show, okay. This is this is pretty much uh, 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 one of the things I like to ask all artists. When you're at a show, uh, are you one of the guys that uh, will be like uh, uh, standoffish? Or are you one of those guys that embrace your fans? Actually, like go to the merch table, like after the show, and say hi. You know, shake babies, kiss hands, kind of deal. I embrace the fans, and I'll tell you, I went to a next. I go to a whole nother level. I'm glad. I'm glad you're talking about this. So, not only on the stage am I connecting eyeballs and mental vibrations okay <laughs> i call them um but i am really engaged with everybody and it's hard not to be engaged with somebody who's just right up against the rail 
So yeah. the people that get there early and take the time and want to want to really, you know, be there and up front and are like feeling the vibrations of what's going on on the stage. Those are the people who I reach to. So I'm hitting fists. I'm connecting. I'm going, <laughs> I'll go off stage and go in. Into the, the crowd? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and at the end of the show, I like to have tons of guitar picks, like our signature guitar picks that we get okay. from in, in tune, in, in tune guitar picks. And there's a QR code on the back of the pick. So that's like my card. All right. Oh, cool. Dream logo on it and it has my name on it. I walk around to every individual that's in the room and I don't care how many people I can connect with. I hand them all a guitar pick. That's awesome, man. It's something for free for being there and supporting well, something for free, but it's, it's past yeah. that is something directly from you. Exactly. That, exactly. So you want to get pictures and then they'll, they'll post them and, and it'll be if they if they love the show they'll 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 say they they loved it a lot and I'll thank them and it'll be a gift. Then that, next yeah. time and you come back, then they'll bring like six friends. Right, yeah. it's like the old growing. school way. Yeah, I like the old school way. I like the old school type of FaceTime. Well, see, uh, over over the years doing this, that's what uh, I. Th- think a lot of us and i'm including this i think a lot of us are finally realizing like how we should work like when social media first started like it was like you were just talking about uh uh, the sprint to the finish or like low and slow so to speak and uh getting the organic followers rather than like the bulk and i think at the beginning I anyway, speaking from uh, my vantage point, I, I I thought numbers were everything. Well, slowly I started to learn. Well, no, you know, if I have like a hundred thousand people, but only like two thousand, like want to interact with me, it isn't really helping me that much. And exactly. are you seeing that with other acts that you work with and stuff? Are they realizing this also? Like the landscape has to be, it's, it's like uh, we were in the age of putting up flyers for shows. And then all of a sudden this uh, internet thing happened and uh, started the message boards and then went to uh, the social media stuff. And now it's almost like we're regressing and going back to like the handshaking. And are we going to be putting up like, well, we're already putting up digital flyers and things. So are you seeing this from other acts? Are they working the same way? I don't see anybody else going through a crowd of people handing out guitar picks. Okay, I I never seen anybody else do that and and don't get me wrong i can't go to a festival you know next year if let's say we play a festival i can't have five thousand picks and go through a crowd of five thousand people <laughs> and touch every person you know but i'm that, talking about an intimate an intimate situation where like club la or buddha rock club or the ranch or you know any of these places that we that we played like in gainesville um at the high dive And those kind of places where you can touch, touch everybody. Actually get up close and personal with bands too. Those are, those are the shows that are the most important in my mind, the festivals and stuff. It's like, yeah, you go, you have a good time. You can see like tons of bands that you want to see that you like. And that's, but you really don't, you don't get that same feeling. It isn't like you're going to be able to talk to them or, or tell them how much their music means to you or anything like that. You're not going to get that connection you will get yeah. at a club show. Yeah. And you're going to get maximum exposure yeah. at, a, yeah. at a festival, of course, but then, you know, there's the smaller intimate uh, settings is where you can give out guitar picks. 
Right. And I think that's fun. That's, that's, that's I love awesome, it. man. <laughs> connecting with fans. That's what uh, it's all about, man. It's like hey, if you're working in a restaurant and you're a restaurant manager and, and you want to touch every table and ask every guest, how, how is their food or how is this? Or, you know, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. That's my way of just, that's my hospitality of thanking. Well, uh, you're showing oh. appreciation. You're, yeah. you appreciate that they actually came to the show. You appreciate that they are a fan and uh, then that's only going to want them to be around you more. And then also they'll turn their friends on to you and those friends will turn. And it just, man, it's that tortoise and hare thing you were talking about a little while ago. The reaction is, is amazing too, because it can go either way. They can say, oh, I got a guitar at home. And I'm like, well, you got to pick it up now. <laughs> or someone would say, "Oh, I got a pick, but I don't have a guitar." And I said, "Well, you well, better you got to buy one." <laughs> yeah. So it's promoting the people doing their own music and being following their own dreams. So it's just that it goes into that for me. And that's, that's what it's all about, man. This this whole thing called rock and metal. That's what it's all about. Aturinband.com is the website all over the socials and uh, what do you say we finally shut up and play warrior in the garden can't wait all right thank you once again for being on real rock nights nice. appreciate it so much man it is the band atrium their tune warrior in the garden it's right here right now on real rock nights click the latest video right here right now and don't forget to like and subscribe